And after thinking about it for a while, the doctor said to me, there's probably a cream you can get. What is that? What on earth? It's a note from the producers. And it says, bin bag challenge rules. Build a shelter using only compostable bin bags, paper tape, natural twine, and anything else you find lying around. The shelter must have a roof and walls, have a door that can be opened and closed, okay? Three, be decorated in a tasteful manner. You must also make the following items. One, a water bucket. Two, a chair. Three, a washing line, complete with clothes. You'd have to make clothes. Four, nature bunting. Five, a kitchen. And six, a friend. You must, one, not cut down or break off any living wood. It's fair enough, there's lots of dead stuff all over the ground here. Two, the next morning you must dismantle everything and leave no trace. And three, you must eat something you forage from the forest. Good luck. Well, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> These are the materials I've got to work with. I've got uh, 10 240 litre uh, compostable bin bags. I've got paper tape and I've got this natural jute twine. Why all the natural materials? Well, it means worst case scenario, if I accidentally drop a piece of this or the wind blows one of the bags away, it's gonna rot and decompose. I'm fed up finding rubbish lying in forests and I do not want to contribute to it. Plus, it actually makes the challenge slightly harder because that compostable bags are notoriously easy to tear. So this could be interesting. But first of all, I'm gonna have a look around and try and find the perfect spot to build this shelter and also have a little bit of a think about what I want to do. So I'm gonna go away, have a think, and I'll come back and tell you my plans. <laughs> oh. Okay, I think I figured this out and I'll try to explain it as quickly as possible. These two trees here are kind of the perfect length for me to sleep on the ground here. My sleep mat should go here. I've checked this tree, it's still alive. If it wasn't alive, I would currently have a branch whacking me in the top of the head. This tree is dead, but there's a tree behind that which is alive. So I'm gonna run a cord from this tree, ridge line essentially, all the way across here, over there, about, about this, this height and that will be the top of a pitched roof for my sleeping shelter here. Then I'm gonna run an additional two lines from this tree to here to there, and then from that tree to here to there, which will create another line at right angle to that. That will then allow me to put another cord back here, across to there, and another cord in front, across here to there. That way I have a structure to put a pitched roof over the top of. Yes, I could do this with lots of wood and take a real bushcraft approach, but I'm trying to use mostly the materials I've got without using too much of the wood. So that's the plan. I'm gonna stop talking and let's just have a build montage.
Ta-da! <laughs> Here we go. Okay, let's go take a little tour of what I made so far. You can see that the entire thing really is held up by all these different bits of cord running back. There is no additional wood used in the support of this. It's all just, it's all just this cordage. And then I've used two sheets, two bin liners in the top, one in the back. They opened up massive, so one did the entire back. And then at the bottom here to keep it in place, I just wrapped it around a log. Around here is the entrance. There's so much more room in here than I think I was originally planning. I think my original plan was, was I think in my head it was going to be a bit just wide enough to fit my my sleep mat in, but I will easily fit my sleep mat along there, plus an entire, actually you can fit two people in here, it's as big as a two man tent. Um, it's not the most taut thing in the world. Um, I reckon also it wouldn't survive a really heavy rain shower. There is a little bit of rain forecast for during the night, but hopefully nothing too heavy. We're in a forest, so we're nice and sheltered from the wind. It's sort of open at the bottom here. Probably insects can get in, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take another couple of sheets to use as a ground sheet for it, and then I'm gonna get my camping stuff set up, and then we'll move on to making the other stuff that I'm supposed to have made, and I'm running out of time to make. This was my backup plan. This is a bivy bag, which is basically a big waterproof bag that you can stick your sleeping bag and all your, your sleeping stuff into. I decided to bring this just in case everything goes wrong during the night and rain starts to go through because then I can quickly get into the bivy. Because I got this uh, overhead ridge line, it means I can quite easily hang the light up. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is my closable door. All I'm going to do is I'll basically pull this down and I'll just I'll just tape it shut, and I think that counts. I wonder is it big enough that I can sit on my chair? Let's see. This is excellent. There's no reception here, so I'm just after using this Zolio here, this little satellite communicator to, uh, well, send Louise a message and tell her I'm okay and uh, get a forecast for tomorrow. It's surprisingly non, I thought it might be flappier, but actually the, it's not a very flappy plastic. Okay, I've got, um, it's 4 p.m., which means I've got two hours of daylight left, so, Let's try and tick off as many of these other items as possible. Okay, decorating in a tasteful manner. There we go. I'm just gonna say that counts as tasteful decorations. <laughs> Item number one, water bucket. I have an idea for a very simple design. I just need some sticks. Something quite nice about making stuff by yourself. I used to do a lot more projects, like a lot of my work, my video work, my commercial work used to involve making things, like we did projects that involved puppets and stop motion, and I haven't done that in a long time, and I kind of, I miss making things. There's something really nice, I'm really satisfied about just making something with your own hands. Right, there's one, I need two of those. If you'd like to see more bushcraft type content on this channel, let me know, because I tried it a few years back and nobody watched it for some reason. I think the, the demographic of wild campers that sort of includes people interested in bushcraft didn't seem to cross over half as much as I thought it would. There we go. There's two. This is the basis of my water bucket. Hey, here's my water bucket. I may have made it in a little bit of a hurry. 
it's a bit wobbly, but I think once I've got water in it, it'll work perfectly fine. <laughs> what else did I have to do? Okay, I've ticked off a few more of the items. <laughs> here is my washing line. I've got a pair of socks here. Here's a pair of underpants. Got my tea towel. And uh, there's another pair of socks. And then over here, we have nature bunting. We have, uh, we've got a leaf, we've got a pine cone, uh, we've got a fern with a dead, uh, a dead fly on it. There's a mushroom. I don't know if that's edible. I'm not gonna try. And we've got some pine needles. I'm ticking these off rightly. And then the other thing I had to do is I had to make a friend and I was a little bit confused about that. I thought, you know, I had to go and befriend somebody, but I realized I could literally make a friend. So I want you to meet somebody. Say hello to Winston. As you can see, Winston likes to dress up as a superhero. He's got a little cape on there. Woo and see, he's got one leg kicked out because he, he likes to dance. He has a, a funky little mushroom hat there. Winston is my new forest friend. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to him. The last thing I had to do was make a chair, um, but I'm going to go and test my water bucket first and uh, Winston can come with me. Let's go, Winston. Come on. I'll go test the water bucket. Let's see, how do we get down to the river here? Oh, oh no! Oh no, Winston! Winston, I'm sorry! Oh, his mushroom hat is floating away. No! Winston! I got you. And your hat, he's not breathing. Come on, Winston. No! Ha-ha! <laughs> it worked! Sort of. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh, Winston's, Winston's okay. He's just, he's just a little bit traumatized. Right. Let's see if I can make a chair with what little time I have left. Just to make clear, all of this wood is dead. Dead, dead, dead. I'm not cutting down anything live. I need this to be about this length. Can't be bothered cutting it. Oh. <laughs> okay. I've got three branches here. Just in case you're wondering why there is so much dead wood. This is a Sitka plantation. Um, and in these kinds of forests, as you can see around the ground, absolutely nothing grows properly. And other trees that try to grow, such as whatever these are, uh, they rarely survive for very long. Um, and they just mostly end up as standing deadwood a lot of the time. Right, so I've seen this done once before. <laughs> I gotta tie these together at the top. And if I do that right, when I then spread them, they will create a triangular base. The reason you tie them together without them spread out is that it means when you open them, it'll put tension on these cords, which will tighten it and make it stronger. And hopefully, when I open this, it will create a tripod. <laughs> it's working. Yes. All right, moment of truth, <laughs> it's gonna work. I've only seen one of these built once. I think I've done it right. Oh. 
Oh, it's sinking a bit. It works. Oh, 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 it's moving. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm trapped between the sides. Very, very peaceful here. I really like this spot. I think I'm definitely going to come back and make another video here. I just have one last thing I was supposed to do, and that was eat something I foraged. And I found a couple of things. And the first thing I found was this is a puffball, which is an edible mushroom. It's one of the few mushrooms that I would have any confidence to try and identify. And you want to get these when they're quite young because once they're mature, um, they go brown in the inside because the spores are developing, you don't want to eat them then. Has a nice kind of mushroomy smell. It smells a bit like those, the white mushrooms you get in the supermarket, except maybe a little bit stronger. I didn't bring a frying pan with me, which might have been the ideal way to cook a mushroom, so I'm gonna, <laughs> just gonna eat it. Over the flame slightly. Toasted mushroom. It's pretty bland. It just tastes like boring. A boring white mushroom. Uh, the other thing I found. Blackberries. Some of the last blackberries of the season. Oh, actually sweet. I'm probably currently ingesting a large number of insects. Oh, no. That one had a crunch. Yeah, it's a weird one. It just occurred to me today. This is about October, mid, heading towards mid October pretty soon. And this time last year, I wasn't very happy um, because I'm not going to run through it all, but if you've been here before, you've heard this before. Long story short, I got kind of sick. I burned out, basically, is the simplest way of putting it. And I didn't get out and do stuff like this quite as much as I'd want it. So it's been really nice to get out today just on my own and take my time. Zero pressure. I haven't felt pressured today, which is quite nice. Quite often, I don't give myself enough time when I'm doing these kinds of videos. And it's just a panic. It's just a panic, panic, panic. And I've got enough. I, I, I live my life in a sort of with a, in a constant state of mild anxiety, as is. Maybe anxiety is the wrong word, but there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on and it all kind of builds up to a background noise a background anxiety background stress um, that means i burn out really, really easily um so it was just nice to go out and do something but there's no pressure and i'm gonna sit here it's quarter to seven um it's gonna be dark and then completely dark in about 15 minutes and then i'm gonna go to bed about nine o'clock the weather conditions tomorrow morning are to be amazing clear skies um, no wind and the sea conditions are also perfect so I want to go out I want to get paddle boarding along the coast on the edge of the Morn Mountains I've never done it before always wanted to do it but for now me and uh, me and Winston here <laughs> we're gonna sit here no Winston and I will read him a story in a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Oh, deep within the mines. It stepped on the bridge. It's whipped a crack to 
Good morning. It's time to leave. And that is me done, everything packed away, not a trace I was ever here. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed, hit a like, please comment. Um, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you like this type of video, this like challenge video, let me know and I'll maybe do some more. But I've got absolutely everything packed up, nothing left behind, everything here. Not, uh, not one thing left behind, so it's ready for me just to hike on out of here and leave. So, thanks for watching. Oh, I nearly forgot my axe.